Hello, Kidney Warriors. James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach. And this is episode 199 of Dadvice TV and it happens to be live tonight. So we are just one video away from making 200 videos to help you learn about chronic kidney disease, help you manage your chronic kidney disease, help you better engage your healthcare team, which should include a renal dietitian. That's the best person to help you learn how to eat right and not be afraid of food and enjoy life while you happen to have kidney disease. Now, if you're new, welcome, great to have you here. Go ahead and click that little subscribe button so that you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you don't mind, click the little bell icon. That way, every time we upload new content, you'll get a notification and won't miss any of it. Now, if you are new, my name's James. I'm a kidney patient, a kidney warrior out here improving my quality of life by focusing on my overall health. Now, tonight we are going to be talking about something that I hope to never, ever need, dialysis. And more specifically, the diet differences when you are on dialysis in regards to protein and including protein supplements, because that's something a lot of people on dialysis may need to incorporate into their diet. Now to talk about that, since I have no experience with dialysis and I hope, I hope to never have personal experience with it from plant powered kidneys, go ahead and welcome Jen Hernandez. Hey, Jen. Hey, James. Hey, everybody. So happy to be back here again. And I, I did a talk earlier this morning about dialysis and, and the protein supplements. And I was telling people even then, you know, dialysis, even though it's something that I don't work too heavily in now, that's how I started my journey with the renal nutrition and kidney nutrition. And I had years of experience on dialysis. So it's kind of near and dear to me to be able to talk more about dialysis nutrition with you guys tonight, because it is really, really important to understand. And especially when you're becoming so knowledgeable about the diet through the basically the life cycle of kidney disease and kidney health. I think it's a really, really important thing to think about that transition because you don't want to be caught off guard if you need to start dialysis. Dialysis is a life saving treatment. So it's something that is really, really helpful for so many people out there and protein is very important. So definitely looking forward to talking with you all about protein supplements and protein with dialysis tonight. Uh, but really quick, in case you've never jumped on almost 200 episodes, if you've never, ever <laughs> seen me on here before, <laughs> uh, my name is Jen Hernandez. I am the owner and founder of Plant Powered Kidneys. And Plant Powered Kidneys, we are a virtual nutrition service. We work with patients, with clients privately and in our course online at plantpoweredkidneys.com. And we are renal dietitians that like to help people with a plant-based diet. And the reason I say we is because, again, you guys, if you've watched me on here before, I've always been working by myself and I've been really, really busy, unable to take on more people. But I've had somebody behind the scenes helping me. Her name is Shelby. And Shelby is a registered dietitian as well. And she is now taking private clients at Plant Powered Kidneys too. So she focuses on helping people with early stage kidney disease. And she really loves helping people with cardiovascular issues like high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, cholesterol, things like that. So if that is something that you are concerned about that you want help with, and if you're in the United States, you can apply right now to work with Shelby. She has a little bit, I think a couple of spots left to work with people, uh, but her schedule is filling up fast for sure. So if you'd like to work with her, you can go to plantpoweredkidneys.com and you can click just the very top banner. There's a link to learn more about Shelby and chat with her there. Uh, and then the other resource we have that is alive and well is our Plant Powered Kidneys Facebook group. I was actually just oh, on yeah. tonight while, <laughs> while I was looking for the, the link to come on the call. I was answering some questions on the Facebook group, chatting there and helping people out. It's a really, really great group. Tons of great questions. I love the pictures and the support is absolutely just really, really hard heartwarming there. So uh, it is it is so good to have that group as well for some more support. 
Yep. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And we have someone special I see in the audience. I'm going to bring her thing up there. Some lady named Deborah. I've seen her on here a few Aww. times. <laughs> That's my mom. Doesn't hey, she Deborah. Look beautiful? <laughs> Now I always remember which one's her, so I yeah. I'll, I can spot her real quick in the comments. <laughs> yeah, she is so supportive, and um, really, my mom is. I'm not just saying this because she's watching me, but my mom is amazing. She is absolutely uh, just she. She raised four psycho children, including myself, <laughs> all back to back, and uh, she's done a really great job. And now she's a really awesome grandma too. So awesome um, fantastic and so supportive um cool. oh and i put a little sticky note on my i put a sticky note on my computer to make sure that i didn't forget to tell you guys that i'm doing a bonus live on instagram tonight actually pretty soon after tonight's dad dad advice i'm going to be going on instagram with a couple other renal dietitians and we're going to be answering questions from people there so if you follow us on Instagram, it's plant.powered.kidneys. You can jump on there, follow us, and then um, I do have a notification coming up, but I'll be there live 7.30 Eastern tonight. So it's about What's an the topic hour and a half gonna from be? now. Um, I think we're just doing Q&A from the audience. I can't Ooh. remember. We had talked about it. We're working on getting kind of a routine going with these lives on Instagram. So, uh, but we do really love answering questions from the audience and it's a really great place to get multiple dietitians to put in perspective of some like different ideas, different opinions, things like that. So if you're looking for even more dietitian information and ideas and support, definitely check us out on Instagram. Awesome. And I know we have a few people that are fairly new. Alice, I see you're here. Great to have you here, Alice. Um, I think I've seen her every show for, I think, maybe the last three weeks or so since she first oh, found great. us. Alice, make sure to jump on that Instagram live later tonight. You got Jen and other dietitians get to ask questions and get answers from multiple people, opinions, information. Outstanding. Yes. All right. Yes. So, Let's jump into today's topic, protein for people that are on dialysis, protein supplements, all that stuff. Why is protein kind of important and such a big thing for those that are on dialysis? Well, first of all, if you're not aware of what dialysis is, this is a treatment that is intended for people with end-stage kidney failure. And that's stage five GFR below 15. Uh, and this is something that somebody will usually start when they're not feeling good. They're nauseous, mm -hmm. they're vomiting, they have no appetite, they're losing weight. Their body is just not able to compensate because the kidney function is so declined. So they start dialysis and this is a treatment that cleans the blood. It gets rid of toxins, it gets rid of the waste products just from our normal body maintenance and from what we eat so that we can continue living and part of the uh i would say the side effect or, or just kind of something that comes from the dialysis treatment is that it does remove some of the protein when it's also removing other things like the toxins and the waste and this is this is just a side result of that and if you guys james have you ever looked into like the history of dialysis or maybe yes it was some of the scary. nephrologists yeah, I, I, I actually um the, the, the team over at Urban Health Outreach mm -hmm. Media, it's always hard to remember their, mm -hmm. their name. They do a lot about dialysis and transplants, and they did a whole thing about the history of dialysis and some of the challenges, how they had to pick who got it. Mm -hmm. That was whew, some difficult decisions people had to make. Yeah. But it's a yeah. it's it's kind of it's kind of scary when you look into it. I mean, what the way I look at it, silver lining, is we look at how far we've come. I mean, we're not yes. still doing those types of treatments. It's really, really come far. And now we're talking more about the artificial kidney and all of these other options that are available. So I I just, I'm astounded by how much it's grown. And, and it's still, they're still looking at ways to make it better. Um, but the reason I just bring it up is like protein is one of those side effects. It's not like how it used to be, but there is some protein that gets remo removed from the dialysis treatment. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, people on dialysis need to get that protein back into their body. And one of the things that we look at on their dialysis lab report is something called 
normalized protein catabolic rate, NPCR. Whew. Yes. They're always fun, right? All these abbreviations. I know all these words. <laughs> Luckily, I don't need to learn and memorize all the dialysis ones at this point in time. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a whole other door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the NPCR, if you are on dialysis, you might have it on your dialysis lab report. So when I was a dialysis dietitian, every month I would pass out lab reports to all of my patients in the clinic. And one of those values on the lab report was NPCR or EN, estimated protein uh, ratio. So when you see that number, it's basically getting an idea of how much protein you're eating based off of the waste products from that protein. So it's saying, okay, this is how much your body got rid of. So we're going to kind of backtrack and estimate this is about how much protein you're eating. Mm. And in general, a person on dialysis should be aiming anywhere from one to like 1.4 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. And this right here is the first sign of how it's very different from the CKD diet. We talked about exactly. low protein being under 0.8. Yeah, this is really flipping it on its head. So now we're looking at this higher amount of protein that we're trying to aim for from the waste and and trying to get more. So that's why if, if you're on dialysis here, you say, yeah, I hear this all the time. You know, they're always encouraging more protein. And it does depend. I see that. I saw that question that kind of popped up there. Yes, and the, I'm going to post your numbers in there from the blog, yeah. which has everything we're yes. talking about, everybody. I forgot to mention at the beginning, there's a blog on plantpoweredkidneys.com with all the numbers and everything we'll be talking about tonight. And there's a link yes. to it in the description. So when we're done, you could pop back over there and yes. get even more information. There's so much information, guys. <laughs> um, so for hemodialysis, it's a little bit less. It's about 1.1 to 1.2. Uh, in the United States, every dialysis clinic has a dietitian. So you can speak with your dietitian to say, how much protein do I need to be eating? What is my protein goal that I should be getting in for the day? For hemodialysis, around 1 to 1.2. For peritoneal dialysis, that's the kind that you do at home from the catheter in your, in your belly. That one pulls out a little bit more protein, so we need to put more in. So they're closer to the 1.4 protein area. So this is, again, very individualized, and there's a lot of different, just like CKD with a lot of other health situations and conditions that are going on, it's just the same, if not even more, important to look at other factors related to the diet. So these are just general guidelines, but I really hope that you guys can speak with your dietitian or your nephrologist to get a more personalized idea of what you should be aiming for when it comes to protein. And even with the protein supplements, they are very often recommended because of this high protein goal. It's very hard for somebody on dialysis to get that much protein in, um, especially when like low appetite or appetite changes yeah. is one of the most common side effects with dialysis, it's very difficult to eat higher protein. I know we've talked about the traditional American diet, tons and yep. tons of protein, but with that that appetite change, that's really what makes it hard. Plus the schedule, dialysis schedule is also mm -hmm. pretty tough. Now, if I'm not eating enough protein, does that impact my dialysis or is that just like my muscle mass and things like that? It, it can have kind of a like cascading factor or cascading result from not eating enough protein. For one, if you're not replenishing your body with the nutrients that it's utilizing, including through dialysis, it's going to be looking for protein elsewhere. So that's what we can see where we see protein energy wasting. We've talked a little bit about this before, PEW. This is something where the body is ending up to, it basically has to use the muscles, it has to use what your body already has, that is not meant for fueling your body. It's meant to keep you strong. It's not meant to feed your body. So this protein energy wasting can happen when a person doesn't get enough calories in their diet. And also if they don't get enough protein, especially with dialysis, it's a very, very common um, effect with dialysis. So we're looking at that as well. And then what can also happen kind of cascading, again, cascading into these other factors uh, something that's also really common on a dialysis lab report is albumin. And we've even mm -hmm. talked about albumin oh, yeah. with the renal I see it on my yeah, reports, but I'm not on dialysis. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's across the board. Like you'll see it in your basic metabolic panel, your comprehensive metabolic panel. If you get a liver panel, you'll get that as well. Sometimes they check albumin just by itself. 
but albumin is a protein made by the liver and think of it as this indicator for inflammation. And with kidney disease, especially on dialysis, there is a high likelihood of chronic inflammation. I mean, even just dialysis itself can be semi-inflammatory to the body just because it is, it's work. It's work for the body to have this process. So albumin is the protein that they'll look at in the labs and it's typically running you know, or on the lower side, they look, they really want to see that albumin at four, but I remember seeing the albumins below. And then I would hear the doctor say, eat more protein. It's not that clear cut that just because the albumin is low doesn't mean you're not getting enough protein. It could be something like your blood sugars are out of whack. Like your A1C might be high. It could be you've had an infection or you've been sick lately. It could be that your blood pressure has been really high and that can be causing inflammation in the body. It could be related to so many other factors. So I remember, I knew for a lot of dietitians, it grinds our gears when we hear someone says low albumin means low protein in the diet. Not always the case, but they do still look at that as a potential factor to therefore to dive a little bit more into the diet to see if you're getting enough protein. So hopefully that's, you know, clear as mud, I guess it's just, <laughs> it's a very, <laughs> it's a very in-depth type of, um, it, it's a very in-depth situation with, mm -hmm. especially, I mean, that's why you have your dietitian on board to help analyze that and look into that. To me, the albumin was always it was the sign that something is going on. It's not, there's yep. low protein. It's okay, what's causing this to be low? We've got to figure that out. And that's going to help us backtrack to improve the albumin. So uh, that's another factor that we look at for protein in the diet, which I'll, I'll jump a little bit ahead into some of the, into some of the talk for tonight. But there is in a lot of dialysis clinics, there is a program called the Oral Nutrition Supplement Program, ONS program. And this is basically where if a person's albumin hits a low range and the clinics that I worked at, it was usually 3.5 was the cutoff. If a person's albumin was 3.5 or lower, they qualified to get a protein supplement during their dialysis treatment. And it wouldn't be oh. of cost to the person on dialysis. And so, so this is... So one of the commenters, um, Virginia, said she's on PD and her protein mm -hmm. is low, so she has to use a protein bag when she does dialysis. Is that similar to that? Ooh, that's actually, well, without getting too much in or asking more questions about it, it's probably this whole other thing, which I wasn't intending on talking about tonight, but we can definitely talk about it. <laughs> it's ID, IDPN. It's intradialytic parenteral nutrition, and it's basically... Uh, it's basically a bag of amino acids that gets added to the peritin meal uh, solution. Oh. So then it gets infused. So it's not something that they eat. It's something that gets added to dialysis. And it can be done both with hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. The research with IPN or IDPN is still, the jury's still out, let me say, is that they're still trying to look to see if the benefits are truly there. And for as a dietitian, I would have um, I would have patients on it because it's like you know what if it's going to give more protein, like I want to at least try this to see if it'll help. And in some cases, it did help. People's appetites would return, their protein levels would get better. In some cases, it didn't. It's really individualized. But I think it's great to see that there's other dietitians that are like, hey, let's try this. Like let's we've got to look at all the options that we have, and that can be a really great option. So. That's oh. a type of protein supplement that is a prescription. You can't get it mm. at the pharmacy or anything. Your doctor has to order it. It basically comes through this pharmacy um, that's connected with the different dialysis companies where they help with providing those resources. Yeah. So if I'm in center, is it like a pill when they give me a supplement or is it something that they add into the system and the protein comes in? It's, However, it's that actually, works. I don't want to get into details of dialysis. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's not uh it's not a medical it's it's not a medicine. It's actually a protein shake or a protein bar ah. um, that is given during treatment. So there's a few different ones, and on the blog I do have a couple of the most common ones listed. The number one I think most common one is Nepro. 
that's yes. utilized a lot. So Nepro, and you'll even see the picture on the carton, it says for people on dialysis. It's very, very clear. If you're on dialysis, this is for you. If you're not on dialysis, this is not for you. And uh, Nepro is a pretty, I mean, it's a pretty good option as far as it's high in calories, it's high in protein, it's a grab and go shake. So it kind of checks off a lot of those boxes. And so if you qualify for ONS, uh, Nepro may be the drink that you're offered. There's another one called Nova Source, and it's th basically the same thing made from a different mm -hmm. company. Um, but again, checks off all those boxes and it's ready made. There are other types of protein supplements on ONS that are little, they look like, it almost looks like, um, like cold medicine or something. It's, yep. it's a nice bright color, but it's a little, it's that little shot that gives you like 16, I think it was 16 grams of protein, 15 grams of protein. It's been a few years now. Um, but this little drink will give you a, literally a shot of protein and it's easily digestible. So that was another really common one. And I also worked in another dialysis clinic where we gave protein bars. So one of the protein bars that we used was the zone perfect protein bars, right. and that would be another option. So those actually qualify, taste pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, they're not, they're not always bad. And sometimes it was nice when we would try to get different flavors so that you weren't getting the same thing all the time. Yeah. So I would try to help, especially with my patients, I would try to do like the strawberry or the cinnamon ones, like not the chocolate or peanut butter. Cause that those flavors get so old after a while. <laughs> um, so something that's a little bit lighter and, and easier to eat because you're eating it three times a week or for peritoneal dialysis, you're eating it six, seven days a week. And to have something like that in your routine that you're eating all the time can get pretty tough. So that's why yep. I have this list on the blog of different protein supplements that I've also recommended to clients that still check off a lot of those boxes where it still provides the protein it's lower in potassium, no phosphorus additives, uh, lower in sodium, the things that we want to pay attention to when it comes to giving somebody on dialysis the protein they need without causing other issues to, to come up like whack-a-mole. <laughs> yeah. And for those that are not on dialysis, but they have kidney disease, these protein supplements are not something that's recommended for them, correct? Very, very, very correct. So if you guys are watching and you're not on dialysis, I mean, it's great that you're watching to learn about this, but please do not go buy protein supplements. Even if you're exercising, weightlifting, if you have CKD, you definitely want to run a protein supplement by your dietitian or your nephrologist because that extra protein is extra work on your kidneys. And if you're trying to preserve your kidney function, if you're trying to stay away from dialysis, having that extra protein is not going to be the solution. So I have, I have clients that, that are preserving their kidney function and they're lifting, but they're not taking protein supplements because that again is counteracting all the work that you're trying to do to keep your kidney function. Yep. And we talked about how much protein is needed. It's individualized and it's, it's more if you're doing it at home compared to in center dialysis, a little bit less that you need. Um, can you talk a little bit more about, are there symptoms or signs that I'm not getting enough protein that I might recognize? So the biggest thing I would say is for one, your energy level because protein is a macronutrient, it's providing calories, it's providing energy. So if you're feeling really drained, then it could be a really good time for you to reassess your diet. We talk about doing food journals like chronometer, doing something to see how much protein you're eating. Your dialysis dietitian would absolutely be thrilled to see a food journal from you. I'm not even kidding. When I had my patients bring in food journals or like share chronometer with me, yep. I was over the moon because it's just, it's so much information that we can utilize to further assess your labs and your, and your situation. So if you do any kind of food journaling, it's just really, really fantastic. And it gives your dietitian a great a starting point to look at for assessing if you're getting enough protein or trying to help you figure out where you can get more protein in the diet. So your energy level, first of all, that's probably going to be the most obvious one for you. Then we're also looking at your weight. If you're losing weight, that can be an indication. 
<laughs> I need that part, but <laughs> right. Well, mine's a different thing. I, I, got, I got to lose it by <laughs> exercising more. <laughs> exactly. And there are even people on dialysis to qualify for transplant. Sometimes there's the BMI uh, guidelines that they'll have. In those cases, you might want to be losing weight, but you want to lose weight in a really safe and healthy matter. It's not going to be helpful for you to lose your protein, your, your lean body mass, because that's not going to be sustaining and your body is basically just kind of tearing at itself to try to get the protein that it needs. So you want to pay attention to that as well. Look at your weight trends when you're on dialysis. Your fluid balance is really important because they're weighing you before and after every treatment. So you want to get a good idea of what your dry weight is. You want to see what your fluid and some of these terms I'm going to put out here are really like dialysis people. You're going to know what I'm talking about. Everyone else like this is probably like a whole nother talk another day getting into more about this. But we're looking at your weight balance. We're looking at what your dry weight is. We're looking at how much fluids you're bringing in to assess if that's the right amount. Um, if you are getting sick more often, or if you're having any kind of skin breakdown, if you're, if you do have like a wound and it's not healing very well, that could be an indication your body doesn't have enough protein to help mm -hmm. with those kind of repairs. Again, not a guarantee, but this is potential factors to be looking at as far as if you're getting enough protein or not. So those would be some of the things I would recommend looking into to assess if you're getting enough protein while you're on dialysis. Now, um, D asked a great question here and it leads into my next question, which is going to be about which types of protein are best for dialysis. But she says her husband is interested, you're gonna love this, in changing over to a plant-based diet. Awesome. Um, can you still get all your protein needs while on a plant-based diet? Yes, absolutely. And one of the really great things, the, the newer research, there's some really great nephrologists and research teams that are looking more into this, that a plant-based diet, even on dialysis is very possible. And there's great benefits to it. The traditional old school renal diet, and I'm talking about the dialysis renal diet, that was really where all of these crazy guidelines of all white bread, all white rice, oh. tons and tons of animal meat, like tons of protein, very little fruits and vegetables because of potassium, like all of these things are adding up to digestive disorder of just chronic constipation, bloating, lethargy, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, all of these problems. So now we're seeing that a transition to a plant-based diet, even for somebody on dialysis, can be really, really impactful and really, really helpful. And I've had clients that are plant-based uh, on dialysis from before, through dialysis, and even after when they get their transplant that have done phenomenal. So the thing that you want to look at, again, talk with the dietitian at your dialysis clinic to make sure that you're focusing on the best types of proteins because a lot of plant-based proteins are also going to have uh, they're also going to have potassium, they're going to have organic phosphorus, things like that, that you want to take into consideration. But the benefits of adding more of those plants into your diet is better bowel movements, which can help control potassium. And it, it will give you better satiety. Sometimes people will claim better energy levels, more stable energy levels, and then fiber in the diet. I mean, there's so many benefits to it. So I think that's a really, really great thing to look at. And that's, that is where we kind of start looking at these different protein supplements. And I have them categorized in some different, um, into some different uh, groups that we're looking at, like essentially the animal-based based proteins and then the plant-based proteins. But the great thing about dialysis too, is that you can have a variety of the diet because your body will be able to take care of whatever kind of protein you're going from, as long as you, I would say, make sure that you're having a really balanced diet and still including things like fiber and some potassium. Oh, fiber is my friend. Yeah. We got to do a show all about fiber. Fiber is like magic. Um, mm -hmm. We need it in our diet. We don't get enough. Um, as a matter of fact, my doctors are, have told me, James, you're not getting enough fiber. I looked at my log. For some reason, I don't know what happened. I thought I only needed 25 grams of fiber a day off by like 10 grams. So they're like, yeah. well, we're going to get you, we're going to ramp you back up on a higher fiber diet. And then after a while, get you back where you should be. 
but we there need to do a go. show yeah. about fiber. There's, it's like magic <laughs> and it's in all it the really good is. food. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it is so, so good for us. Now, what types of protein are best for those that are on dialysis? So there was this term and I've brought it up to you recently in the past couple of weeks, James, because you guys, I mean, you guys know a lot of this month, we've been talking about protein in various ways, including tonight. So there's this term that we used to use called high biological value protein. Mm -hmm. And this is basically meaning this is a, a source of protein that will give the body enough amino acids for the body that it needs to use for all the things that our body uses amino acids and protein for. What we're seeing, what we're focusing on more now is another term called, and I have to look at it to remember, it's a long, it's a long acronym. I, I protein. see it. Boy, it's a long one. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six words. Yes. So protein digestibility corrected amino acid score, PDC. AAS. So this is kind of a newer term. Well, I don't even want to say newer because I know it's been around for a while, but it's just, we've been using high biological value protein as the, um, that's been the term we've been using. So we're like, no, you know, that that's not long enough of a term. Let's use this one. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to do PDCAAS. Basically what this is measuring is the quality and the digestibility of a protein source after it's gone through like the cooking process or whatever, like how we would put it into our bodies. So oh, they that, that's at, actually good. Cause sometimes we cook things and we change it. There's a chemical reaction. Exactly. Exactly. Uh -huh. And there's some losses in food when you cook things down that you won't have the same kind of nutrients. And that's why looking at nutrition information example for online, if you looked at four ounces of red meat, well, is it cooked or is it raw? Because it's going to give you very different number or very different values. So, um, in this PDCAAS, they're looking at the quality of the protein, and one of the highest quality proteins are eggs, which egg whites, for the record, are a fantastic source of high biological protein that doesn't have phosphorus. The phosphorus is found in egg yolks. So if you're on dialysis and you like eggs, but you need to worry about your phosphorus, try egg whites instead, and that will give you some great high biological value protein without the other things that you want to be careful of. But egg whites are low in calories, so you wanna make sure you're adding more things to it as you are putting this into your diet. So another one that scores up high is cow's milk. And we can see that one up there as well. And I, I see you have, yep, you have the chart up. Um, so that one's another great option for good digestibility. The beef products are going to be showing as still on the higher range, uh, but there's a little bit lower protein efficiency ratio. There's a little bit lower amino acid score. This one is really neck and neck with soy and I vote more on soy over beef because we know that beef, red meat, has some negative connotations, some negative issues related to red meat and our, our health. So I would say 100% if you're going to choose one or the other. I'm not saying they're equal. They're very, very different. But nutritionally, soy would definitely win in this situation. So I would say soy is a great thing to include as a lean protein option in your diet. Then finally, there's wheat, and they were looking at the protein in wheat. And I was just talking with some people in our Facebook group tonight about uh, Seitan, or well, it's S-E-I-T-A-N, and that is a basically a protein substitute made from vital wheat gluten. So mm. it is a high protein food. Wheat does have protein in it. So again, when you're thinking you have to have animal products to get your protein in, that's not the case. Other sources do have protein in it, including wheat, as well as other like soy, soy products, even our legumes and lentils and nuts and seeds, all these things provide um, protein for the diet, which is why I'm such a big advocate for somebody on dialysis wanting to follow a more plant-based diet, that they can get the protein that they need. You just really want to work with your healthcare team about it so that you do it in a really smart and safe way. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, <laughs> now I got to get my screens back all organized. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, if I'm not going to eat or if I it just doesn't fit my diet, I'm, I'm not hungry enough, I'm not getting enough for food, and I need the supplement, my renal dietitian, you know, here in the States provided at the dialysis center, uh, tells me, hey, let's add a supplement. What do I need to look for in a protein supplement when I'm on dialysis? So I have a few general guidelines of like things that you want to aim for. Um, and there are plenty of protein options that do check off all of these factors. But in general, try to aim for a protein bar that has at least 15 grams of protein in it, because that's going to provide you a good amount of protein. There's a lot of um, protein bars out there that have like five or eight grams of protein in there. And while that's helpful, many times they have a lot of other things like sodium, potassium, phosphorus that don't really, the pros and cons aren't, aren't, aren't really weighing out the way you want them to. You need so to get the bang try... for the buck. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's a great way to put it. <laughs> so looking for one with at least 15 grams of protein. And a lot of the examples that I have are definitely 15 plus, um, that would be ideal. Some of them, 12 to 15 can be okay as well. Um, it's going to be different for everybody. And there are some that are in that teen range that I would recommend, especially for my patients that were just like, I just can't chew through a protein. If you've ever had a typical protein bar, many of them are really, really dense, really, really chewy, super, super filling and kind of hard to get through. So in some cases, I would say, okay, let's try with one that's a little bit lower in protein just to give you something. And that can be really helpful. It's like, it's better than nothing. So the one example that always comes to the top of my head is one of my favorite protein bars that I've personally had and recommended before, which is Power Crunch. They're in that lower protein range, but it's like the, um, you know, those like sugar wafer cookies, the the, oh my the bar goodness. looking ones. Yes. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, I love yeah. those things. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So they're they're kind of like those cookies. So they're really really light. I would get them from my grandma uh, when when she needed some more protein and she loved chocolate. So I would get her the chocolate power crunch bars. Um, but that that's a brand that's a little bit lower on the protein, but it still fit into a lot of my patients' diets, mm -hmm. and it was a lot easier to eat. So. Again, ideally 15 plus grams of protein. For the potassium, you probably wanna look at having one that's not crazy high in potassium, and many of them are not very high in potassium, but try to cap it at 250 milligrams for potassium, especially if you're around that 15 gram range. For sodium, again, this is a um, more processed food, so yeah. that's where you're gonna be finding salt. So. Again, we're looking at balancing these trade-offs. So I want you to get the protein in and tr keep the sodium under 300 milligrams. Some of them, they add the salt to change the, uh, the flavor or as a preservative. So cap it at 300 milligrams. If it's over that, it's, it's gonna be a bit too much. But in many cases, a protein bar is basically replacing at least a part of a meal or something. So I don't expect it to be sodium free because that's just not realistic for what you're getting. The and then 300 finally, milligrams sounds like a lot in a bar. Woo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's like, that's the cap for me. That's the cap. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, no added phosphates. So anything in the ingredient list that has PHOS, that is a that is something you definitely don't want to have, especially on dialysis, because dialysis, it is very, very hard to control phosphorus on dialysis. Most people take phosphorus binders to help with their phosphorus management. So I'm not about to recommend something that has an additive that's going to uh, increase that phosphorus number on your lab report. And I just noticed you have this awesome picture about this, what to there look for. There we go, yeah, yeah. So we have a few little graphics on there to help explain some of the things that we're looking at here. So yeah, at least 15 grams of protein, less than 250 milligrams potassium, keep it under 300 milligrams sodium and make sure there's no added phosphates. And this is whatever kind of protein supplement you're looking at, either a bar, a powder, something ready to drink. Although ready to drink is very, very hard to not have added phosphates. Even the ones that are like organic and, you know, we're so clean or whatever, they still have added phosphates. So the ones that are dialysis specific, they know to be careful with phosphates. So those ones are generally safe.
Yep. All righty. <laughs> I'll try to play around with something else on this. <laughs> um, now, what are some protein supplement options? So the first group that we look at is the whey protein, whey protein powders or whey protein bars. This is one of the most common ones. And whey protein is the protein that comes from milk. So this is an animal protein, but as we saw earlier, that cow's milk is a really high biological, the high PDCAAS value. It is a great source for protein that your body needs to use. So if you're looking at the whey protein, I'll have to look at my specific ones for, for what I've been researching. Um, so optimum gold or optimum nutrition. Oh, usually, usually you'll see it like ON, a really big ON on their protein powder. The gold standard protein powder, that was a really, um, that one's really easy to find. You can find it at drugstores. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it at Walmart. Um, that one's really good. And their vanilla protein powder has 24 grams of protein per scoop, and it's only 150 milligrams of potassium. So that one's a really good balance. Um, another one is Body Fortress whey protein. And that one, that one has 30 grams of protein per scoop with only 180 milligrams potassium. So um, that one is a good. Pure Protein is another great brand that has 25 grams of protein per scoop. Um, I will say you want to be careful with the brands. Again, they'll do pure protein, for example. They have protein powders. They have protein bars. They have ready-made protein shakes. I'm not saying the brand all across the board is good. You've got to look at not only the products, but even the flavors. I've come across some some brands where one flavor was okay and one flavor was not okay. Yep. Um, I mean, Power Crunch is an example. There's some of those that I don't recommend because they're too high in one of the areas or not high enough in protein. So you want to look specifically at the flavor, the brand, everything there to make sure that it still works for you. The ones that I have listed in my article are, I, I even say like this flavor and I have a link for it. So that that is the specific one I'm looking at. And when I'm checking the nutrition information, I'm looking at that one in particular. Um, so those are some, those are some of the protein powders that I recommend. And just kind of a side note, about powders in general. Um, with powders, you've got to mix them into a liquid. And, you know, I talked about your fluid restriction. We've talked about being mm -hmm. careful about that before. So if you're on a fluid restriction and you're having a hard time with your fluid restriction, mm -hmm. a protein powder might not be the best bet for you because again, you're giving yourself more protein, but then you're adding in more fluids. So we're playing whack-a-mole where we're taking care of this problem, but another one pops up. So if you're having a hard time with your fluids, you might want to look at a protein bar instead so that you're not automatically taking in more fluids. But you can always talk with your dietitian and find out, uh, get some more ideas about what works best for you in your situation. Um, and a lot of renal dietitians that are in dialysis will have coupons, they'll have free samples, they'll have things to help you get an idea of what works. I mean, one of my favorite things that I love doing in dialysis was I would provide samples and I would have mm -hmm. what we call the lobby day where I'd be out in the lobby, out in the waiting area, and I would make a big batch of protein smoothies or I'd cut up protein bars and pass them out so that my patients got to try something that I was recommending. And then many times the company would give me a coupon, like coupon books or something that mm -hmm. I could pass out. So if somebody wants to get it, then they could use the coupons. So you can always ask your dietitian in the clinic as well if they have any recommendations um, as far as like anything specific that you are concerned about. So now I'm going to piggyback like on top side. of that with a okay. trick that I always do. And it works like almost every single time. It's so rare this doesn't work. I find the customer service, either phone number or email, and I just email them or call them and say, hey, do you guys have any samples or coupons? Almost everyone will send me coupons to go to Kroger mm -hmm. and get it for free or something like that. Or they will send me a little box of samples of their products to try because they know if I need these foods and I like theirs, I'm hooked for a long mm -hmm. time. They've won a customer. So I am never hesitant 
to reach out to a company or anybody, even my dietitians, mm -hmm. and ask, hey, do you guys have any samples? So I want to find out what I like or what I don't like. Yeah, that is a really great way to do it. And of course, companies are looking for, they want to have good customer service. Of course, they want your business. So, you know, it's it's not it's not going to be anything to them to send you even like some digital coupons. Exactly. That you can just print or you can show at the checkout. Uh, so that's a really, really great way to try out some other things. Yep. One of them, I can't remember which one it is. Every month I get coupons from them. I asked over two years ago and they, I'm just on a list and they mail out and they send like brochures and things like that. Not like oh, wow. a stack of brochures for me to give out, but like, Hey, here's mm -hmm. a new product. We have a new flavor. This is what we're working on. Here's recipes on our website. They're so good once they find a way to connect with a kidney patient because uh, mm -hmm. they really can't afford to run ads on TV. Uh, right. So they like it when we call mm -hmm. and give them our information and ask for stuff. So don't hesitate, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then please, from the dietitian side, if you do get coupons or information or something, tell your dietitian about it so that they can also get more because then they can get that and they can give it out to everybody else in the clinic too. So it's, you know, sharing is caring, knowledge is power, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yep. Now, collagen is another form of protein. Can you talk a bit about mm -hmm. that? Because I see a lot of questions about that in message yes. boards. And yes. I know nothing. Yeah. So collagen is still an animal-based protein. Uh, it is something that helps us with our hair, our skin, our bones, our nails. And while it sounds, I mean, there's so much out there right now, especially, I feel like I'm seeing more and more commercials for like collagen products. It's still a protein supplement. So it's not something advised for CKD. And I'm just saying that because I know people have asked in the group, people have asked me mm -hmm. specifically, well, can't I just take collagen? Cause they think it's like, it's not a real protein or, or something. It's still protein. Um, in fact, there was a study that looked at people on dialysis in the clinic, hemodialysis, and they found that if they were given a collagen supplement, that they had improvements in their albumin and their NPCR, that estimated protein. So again, if it's if the NPCR is estimating how much protein your body has been consuming and that number goes up after taking the supplement, that is indicating that you're taking in more protein. So that's how you know it's a protein supplement because it's your body is saying, hey, your body is creating more wastes from this protein. So it is a protein supplement, but they did find that people on dialysis did benefit from collagen. And the great thing about the collagen supplements is that they're very often unflavored and they're a much smaller scoop. So a, a traditional protein powder, the scoop will be like a quarter cup. It, it seems pretty large. The collagen protein is a much smaller scoop. And again, it's usually unflavored and it dissolves well in hot or cold drinks. So I've had a lot of patients that will take collagen and stir it into their coffee in the morning or into their tea or something because you're adding the protein there without changing the flavor. There are like coffee creamers made from collagen. So um, I know Vital Proteins makes one and I think Garden of Life does too, but Vital Proteins is a really big, I, I don't know, maybe it's just because of the world that I'm in that I see so many commercials for them, but uh, they do have their coffee creamer and that one is uh, dialysis friendly. There's a very small amount. It's 55 milligrams of sodium. They don't include potassium or phosphorus content, but they don't have additives. So that's a good sign. And for that little scoop, it's 10 grams of protein. So a couple scoops would give you the 20 grams that we're kind of aiming for. And not all coffee creamer is safe for people in dialysis, correct? Right. Yes. Those powdered coffee creamers. I can't tell you guys how many times I've caught people with those. Those uh, The shelf-stable powdered ones are almost guaranteed to have phosphorus <sighs> additives. Oh, not oh, oh. good. You flip it around and it's phos, 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 phos. And something yes. else. <laughs> yes. Oh, and by the way, we add, we, you can add this to coffee. Yeah. It's very, very notorious. And I mean, 
look for an alternative. We have, we did a whole other, we did a whole other video talking about coffee with CKD. I have a blog talking about coffee and coffee creamers and the ones that are good. So we have tons of resources for you guys to find alternatives that are better. If you're on dialysis, the collagen coffee creamers could be a good option for you that might be supportive for those protein needs without really changing any of your current habits. And then in the blog, because we, we won't have time to go over all of them, you have so many different you know recommendations. Boom, boom, boom. And they're mm -hmm. all clickable. You can click right on them, take it a place, learn about them, order some if you want. Um, mm -hmm. Could we talk before we run out of time about how do I go about adding more protein into my diet? I don't want to go boom. And all of a sudden, a ton of protein. I'm guessing that's probably a shock to my system and not the best way. How do I do yeah, it? Yeah, and it's also hard. Yeah. So my recommendations, and again, this is really, we're still talking about people on dialysis who need more protein. Uh, the number one thing I would recommend is just start focusing on your dialysis days. So if you are getting treatment in center, you're going to dialysis three or four times a week then just focus on maybe adding some kind of protein supplement on those days because that is the day, number one, your schedule is probably super, super crazy. I know all of my clients, my patients would have, you have a four hour dialysis treatment, but that's not the only part of your day. You might have an hour for transportation before, an hour for transportation after. Maybe you have a doctor's appointment you have to get to that day as well. Your day is pretty chaotic. So having like a protein bar that's grab and go can be really, really helpful. And you can try to factor this in a couple ways. For one, you can plan on taking it before you go to dialysis. So again, folding it into part of your routine of this is something that I eat ahead of time. Maybe you're eating it in the waiting room before you sit down for treatment. Maybe you're eating it for your breakfast with your coffee whatever the case is, find a way to incorporate that in and make that part of your routine. Now, some clinics may let you eat in treatment, but most clinics will be really, really hesitant about that because there are side effects that can happen or, or not even just side, it physiologically happens when you eat on dialysis. When you eat, it pulls your blood to your stomach to try to help with taking all those nutrients. Ooh, That's I not never what knew your body that. should be doing. Yeah. Yeah. So it, that's why a lot of people uh, might feel tired after a meal that their blood is going towards their digestive system to help pick up all these nutrients that you just are put, taking in. So the, one of the common things that can happen if you eat during treatment is you might pass out, you might have low blood pressure and pass out. So that's not good. Yep, not you good. might, yeah. So there might be safety issues related to chewing or swallowing, even temperatures like you know, if you have something that's too hot or too cold, that's one of the reasons why most dialysis clinics, and I say most because I can't say all, I know the ones that I've worked at had pretty strict rules. Um, they don't heat up your food for you. So if you bring something in, you know, if they allow you to, then it is what it is. Um, there's also a choking hazard. Like what if you're on dialysis and you, and you choke or you're coughing on your food? if you're connected to a machine that makes a pretty scary situation. So in many cases, they're not gonna advise that you eat during your dialysis treatment. So eating before dialysis or eating after. The hesitation I have with eating after dialysis is again, not many people feel really up to eating afterwards. Mm -hmm. So pay attention to your body and don't try to force yourself to eat, but kind of steer into the skid, so to say. If you know you're not gonna feel good after dialysis, you should plan ahead and eat something beforehand so that your body has some good nutrition when instead of later on, you're not feeling good and you're trying to make yourself eat. And that might not be a good thing for you either. But if you do okay with your treatments and if you feel fine and you're really hungry, then yeah, sure. Plan to have your protein snack after dialysis as well. And that's a great, that's a great way to replenish your body of the protein that it's lost during treatment. Um, you could also use a protein bar or a protein shake or smoothie as a bedtime snack. So this is something that I do recommend to a lot of my clients, especially again, ones on dialysis that need that extra protein saying, you know, use that. A lot of the bars are very sweet. They're like candy bars. So it's like a dessert. This could be some, exactly. So this could be something that you could use as your evening snack, something sweet to kind of wind down. 
even for people who have diabetes, there are plenty of protein bars that have, or protein shakes or powders that have the fiber or that are lower in sugar to prevent the significant blood sugar spikes. That's a really, really big thing. So you don't have to worry too much about that, um, about those sugar spikes. So um, the other thing I wanted to make sure to say is I mentioned phosphorus already, but if you have problems with your phosphorus and you're taking a phosphorus binder to help prevent or lower your phosphorus level, make sure you take your binder with your protein bar or your protein supplement as well because phosphorus and protein are really interconnected so regardless of what, what the label says unless your dietitian or doctor says otherwise you'll want to be evaluating to see if you should be taking your binder with your protein supplement very good now for those that want to learn more i'm going to plug it again the blog post i, I put it in the chat also in the description it's on plantpoweredkidneys.com so much great information on here. There's charts, there's great images of, of examples, recommendations of bars and things like that. <clears throat> All of that is on there. Um, we did get a question I wanted to ask you real quick because I, I see this quite often. You've worked a lot in the dialysis centers. Um, someone asked, why do I cramp and spasm so badly? Yeah, that is a very common situation for a lot of people on dialysis. Cramping can be caused by a fluid imbalance. And a lot of people think, oh, well, maybe I need to eat more potassium. And that might be the case. Maybe I need to drink more fluids. Again, might be the case. But cramping can also happen if you have too much fluids. So if you bring in more than two liters or two kilos of fluid to your treatments, depending on your body size, even two kilos might be too much. What happens is essentially the fluids getting pulled through your body and also pulling through your muscles and can cause that cramping. So you want to be really, really careful with your fluids and talk with your dialysis team about what's causing it. People don't believe me when I say you're drinking too much fluids and they think, oh, I must be dehydrated because I'm cramping. And that's just, I think that's kind of something that we all hear from time to time. But in dialysis with kidney failure, it's the fluid removal when the body's going through a lot that it can cause cramping. If you're reaching your dry weight, and so maybe you gained some weight and your dry weight needs to be adjusted. So they're not bringing you back down to the old weight that you used to be. So having a weight evaluation, that, um, that was part of my job as a dialysis dietitian was to do these evaluations of my patient's weights to make sure that we were getting off the right amount of fluid the nurses and the doctors also do this as well. And then we, as a team, we get together to talk about if there should be any changes. So you've got to talk with your team because there's so many, there's so many reasons that it can happen that we can't say for sure it's definitely this or it's definitely this or, or it's not this. So talk with your team about it because there's quite a few explanations and you'll just need to dive into which one of those is kind of makes sense for your situation. Yep. Sounds good. All right. Well, we are at the top of the hour. I want to thank you, Jen, and let everyone know I'm working to get Shelby on. Maybe next week we'll get her on here. Uh, I know she's excited. She's yes. working with people already, <laughs> has availability to work some more people. So plantpoweredkidneys.com. If you don't have a dietitian right now, number one thing every kidney patient should do, in my opinion, it's at least a few times work with a renal dietitian. So you're not afraid to eat food. And someone had asked earlier, what supplements should I take? Supplements are to fill deficiencies in your diet and your renal dietitian will help you determine if you need any supplements. And if you do, which ones and how much. Don't be supplementing just because Bob on Facebook does it and Sally over there on YouTube does it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Not good, could hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody, thank you so much. And well, this is the last video for the week. Yeah. Next well, video. I, I might, <laughs> I was going to say, I might see some of you guys in about 30 minutes if you come on yes. Instagram. <laughs> and someone had posted your Instagram. Let me bring that up here real quick. Someone was nice enough to post it. Let me find it. There it was. 
Yes. All right. Plant.power.kidneys Plant. is her Instagram page. Multiple renal dietitians right there get to ask questions. Oh, so awesome. You know, information is just power. All right, everybody. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. Jen and I will be back next Tuesday, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.